So yes, it's really, it's unbearable unhappiness, really. And it's like when Radharani is saying, uh, when she sees Krishna for a short time and she says, uh, my ang agony is now even bigger because it's like, like a lightning strike in, in, in the middle of a night, of a dark night. I just had a little association. And now agony is bigger. It's similar. If we have the association and we lose it. Rade, Rade, Ramani. Rade, Rade. Sorry, I'm still rade, rade. I'm listening from my room. Ah. So, text number 249, Mukta Madhya Kon Jiva Mukta Karimani, Krishna Prema Yanra Se Mukta Shiromani. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu then inquired, Out of all liberated persons, who should be accepted as the greatest? Ramananda Rai replied, He who has love for Krishna has attained the topmost liberation. We understand that Krishna in this uh, when he said, who has love for Krishna, it also includes Mandri Bhav. Also, it's not specially mentioned here, but actually it's including. So when you have a direct relationship with Krishna, then you have attained topmost liberation. Because you will not come back into this uh, material world. You will be in the loving exchange. Mm -hmm. But good to underline, still exchange, giving and taking. It's not complete liberation to some sort of pure, perfect spiritual form, but that there's a there's an experience that's going on, a relation to uh, well, the Mohan that remains. So the exchange can go on. It's the exchange that's the prema. Actually, that's why it's topmost. You are liberated. Mm -hmm. But you are actually in a loving position. Otherwise, you may be liberated, but you are just in in the Brahman or personless. Yeah, exactly. Then you're in the. Empire. Or you may you may even come to Vishnu Loka, and you look like Vishnu. You know, you have four arms, and every and, and everyone is respecting you like God, and you're looking like God, and you know you're behaving like this, and all. That's also some kind of liberation, but also not the top most. So it's not only liberation. Yes, Radha Charan Prabhu, please, please share. Once, uh, once um, Nimai Pandit asked Gadadhar, what's the definition of liberation? And then Gadadhar gave definition according to Nyaya, according to logic, which we learned. According to this definition, Liberation is uprooted all sufferings. When someone is uprooted all sufferings, the reason means of sufferings, then he is liberated person. Mm -hmm. But Nimai Pandit was not satisfied with this. No, 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 no. Real liberation is mean to serve in your Swarup to the Lord. Mm -hmm. Why? Because, for example, if I have capacity to love, but I'm not using, I'm not completely liberated. Means my capacity, main capacity, not coming out. I have capacity to walk, but I'm not walking. I am free, but I'm not walking. What is freedom? I couldn't go and see what is where. So liberty, you have to put into practice. Liberty you have to means, use it. Huh? Liberty means you completely open yourself. It means all capacity, everything what you have is blooming. Right. So liberation in the logic sense is Complete independence. 
But we don't want to be independent. We want to be totally in a loving relationship with another one. Actually, the real independence is the full dependence on Radharani's love. Mm -hmm. This is the real independence because Radharani is completely selfless. She would never, ever give you a position which is not to your full satisfaction. She is doing it with, with, with Krishna. She is giving him full satisfaction. And of course, because it's her nature, she will also be very sure that she will give us this position, that we are 108% completely in our nature, completely satisfied serving, as our nature is. Not everyone can be a manjari because other jobs are also needed, right? Spiritual sky has also some, some other positions. So, mm -hmm. of course, the, the taste of the living entities has to be different, but that's just the nature. And she will bring us to that. And this is full liberation. Otherwise, like Prabhupada said, you may be on Vishnu Loka, but you can come back because you are not fully satisfied. And that means you are not really completely liberated. In this moment you are, but you have to come back to Earth to get another uh, instructions to be possible to go back in Mandari bath. That's why even from Vishnu Loka uh, and half God coming, when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is here, and is spreading this mandri bath, mm. like we can see in the case of Prabodhananda. It's one very nice example. He was in Saki bath. He came and he got mandri bath. Because Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is, this is actually what he wants to distribute. And if you want or not, you will get it. Mm. <laughs> you will get the highest, the highest offer. <laughs> And like you say, this is completely freedom because this is your nature. It's completely free from any pressure, from any influence or something like this. When you start to think down this path, you see how foolish the Western idea of liberation is. <laughs> the philosophical idea of liberation. It's just yeah. a complete nonsense. Huh? Yes. That's true. We, we just have to look to the East and then we can find the truth. Jesus also came from the East to the West. So he tried, but <laughs> <laughs> what to do? Brother Charan, a wonderful point. Yeah. <laughs> a wonderful, I love it. I, yes, a wonderful point. Thank you very much for that. So purport from Srila Prabhupada, in Srimad Bhagavatam 6.14.5, it is said, Muktanam apisidhanam narayan parayanaha sudurlabha prasantatma prasantatma koshishvapi mahamune. O great sage, of the many millions of liberated persons and of the millions who have attained perfection. He who is a devotee of Lord Narayan is very, very rare. Indeed, he is the most perfect and peaceful person. So from this statement we can understand that already someone who is a devotee from Lord Narayan is very, very rare. How rare is a devotee of Radha? I'm just thinking the last days, weeks, months about this. 
who is coming together in these sharings, you know? It's really one of millions, one of many millions who is serving Radharani, who is really taking this task to come to Radharani's lotus feet. So I'm so thankful and I'm so happy to be one speck of dust of this association. It's really amazing. Yeah, actually, I'm so fortunate. Yes. I agree 108 <laughs> percent. Because when I came to here and Goroni started to sing, I feel so much blessed and so much safety and so much happiness because it's my native. Mm. This glorification of Radha is my native nature. So text 250. Gana Matya Kona Gana, Chivara Nitya Dharma, Radha Krishna Prema Keli, Yegite Ramarma. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu next asked Ramananda Roy, among many songs, which song is to be considered the actual religion of the living entity? Ramananda Roy replied, that song describing the loving affairs of Sri Radha and Krishna is superior to all other songs. Purport by Srila Prabhupada, as stated in Srimad Bhagavatam 10.33.37, Anurak, uh, Anukrahaya Bhutanam Manusham Deham Ashtitaha Pachate Tatrishi Krida Yashutva Tatparu Bhavet. Lord Krishna descends apparently as a human being, and he exhibits his transcendental pastimes in Vrindavan, so that the conditioned soul may be attracted to hearing his transcendental activities. Non-devotees are strictly prohibited from participating in songs celebrating the loving affairs of Radha and Krishna. Actually, why is this? Why it's prohibited, actually? If I have a material mind and I hear about this wonderful exchange of love, I will take it as material and then I will go to hell because of this thinking, actually. This is what Prabhupada stated. And that's why it's prohibited, because it wouldn't, wouldn't be helpful in this moment. It would be destructive for this person, actually. Unless one is a devotee, it is very dangerous to hear the song about the pastimes of Radha and Krishna that were written by Chayadev Goswami, Chandidas, or other exalted devotees. Lord Shiva drank an ocean of poison, but one should not imitate this. <laughs> one must first become a pure devotee of Lord Krishna. Only then can one enjoy hearing the songs of Jayadev and relish transcendental bliss. If one simply imitates the activities of Lord Shiva and drinks poison, one will certainly meet with that. It's quite... Um, it reminds of one of the fools that Prabhupada talks about. And one of the types of fools is the one that sees Krishna's incarnation as a simple man. 
just a man. So when it says, if we don't understand that it's God, then we fall into the danger of hell, like you were saying. But to understand that he's a God is to open our hearts to him, have a devotional loving attitude to him, and then we can understand the pastime that he's acting out. The moment we see Krishna as God, our hearts are open to understanding the divine nature of the Leela. Yes, if we have hearts like children, we can understand the pureness of the love. If we have hearts from materialists, then we cannot understand the pureness of this love and we will take it as sexual activities. Mm. And then we will go to hell. Because we, we, we will try to imitate and like this. So mm. Better that we try to imitate the soul of God and not the material body of God. Yeah, like we usually do here. Huh? On on the main road, you can see who, who is playing God. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> so that's why it's prohibited for non-devotees to hear that. So, but it's not the end of Srila Prabhupada's explanation. So, I will just end it. Talks between Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Ramananda Rai were meant for advanced devotees only. Those who are on the mundane platform and who study these talks in order to put forward some thesis for a PhD will not be able to understand them. Instead, these conversations will have a poisonous effect. And Prabhupada is saying this because actually in that time when he was uh, building the, the base for the Western so ISKCON, there were some PhDs who actually studying the scriptures in uh, America and were giving their understanding. And of course, this was completely different from the understanding of Srila Prabhupada. So Srila Prabhupada actually also gave the title to his Bhagavad Gita as it is because so many people try to uh, give their explanation of understanding. So he wanted to make clear as it is and Chaitanya Charit Amrita of course <laughs> is also written by Srila Prabhupada as it is. Mm. <laughs> and he is really, I, I, I'm so amazed, the more I understand, the more I have loving respect to this person because he's so genius. He's writing everything so genius and not, not stepping on any feet. He's writing it for everyone, but so genius. So you may understand on the base of your bath, but he wrote it neutral for all baths. And this is genius. Mm. Not only this, but it's one of this point. <laughs> So am among many songs, which song is to be considered the actual religion of the living entity? So I was thinking the song describing the loving affairs of Sri Radha and Krishna is also the Mahamantra. 
Because actually it is a description of the loving affairs between Radharani and Krishna. Of course, there are many songs describing this also, very direct. But the Mahamantra is also a description and is meant for everyone. You cannot offend this name, actually. There's a nice story. One, I don't, do you remember who, who was going on toilet and chanting the Maha Mantra? I don't remember the name. I don't know the story. I, I have, I know one story then. <clears throat> Narada Muni wants to say one person who used his rule to grind him. And all day he is going by cycle, is his rule. Eh, eh, go, go, like this. Narada looking at him and his heart was feeling painful. This Jiva, this Atma, put both in human body and uses his pain in all life, like this, going around. Is bull. And he come to him and told, uh, yes, this person gives pranam to Narada. And Narada thought, you, would you chant not go, go like this, but Radhe, oh, sorry, Krishna, Krishna. And this person thought, sorry, my bull is too right. old to right. learn new words. He knows only this word, go, go. Do you have any time? No, all day I'm working like this. No, any time when they can chant Krishna, Krishna. Oh, yes, I have one time. When I'm going to the toilet. <laughs> this story. <laughs> That's not the one. This is one story, yes. Uh, the other story is that one was actually uh, chanting on the toilet, Hare Krishna, and somebody heard it and he, he felt offended. And it was just, you know, a very natural toilet. Um, and this one was actually, uh, how do you say, uh, kicking, kicking this toilet, you know, from the back and it break. Oh. And uh, actually then he was actually a bhakta of Krishna. So next day he met Krishna and said, Oh, Krishna, what is with your back? You have pain in the back? He said, yes. Why? Ah, this was you. You kicked me in the back. What? I kicked you in the back? How is this possible? Don't you remember yesterday, the toilet? This guy was chanting my name and I was there and you were kicking. You tried to kick him, but actually I was standing in front of him to protect him. So you kicked me. That's the story. <laughs> so actually, we are anyway in the toilet, isn't it? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> all this material existence is like a toilet, isn't it? What is pure here? Only, only the hearts of the devotees are actually pure. So what place is pure? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I can add about uh, why this song, which is glorifying Radha Krishna's love affair, is the greatest. Yes, please. Madhavacharya explained, when he explained the Vaipuncha, he added a romantic light in his poetry. He explained why. He told poetry couldn't be recognized as the greatest if no romantic line. Because it's the greatest feeling. Of course. Poetry coming from the feelings in heart. The greatest feeling, strongest feeling is love. Even though in, po in song, no love, this song not so strong. Hmm. Yes, wonderful. There was uh, some command in the chat that maybe it was Mahaprabhu and not Krishna who was kicked in the back on the toilet. It's possible because I really do not remember it, everything. I just uh, remember something of this.
Sorry to interrupt. Ramen. Yes. And um, I think I heard from Rasa Microagia. And she said, uh, it's not the kicking things, but um, one boy asked to Mahaprabhu. And then um, Mahaprabhu at that time chanting um, ma mantra as like a, uh, the, not from the Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. It's like a, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, and Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, 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 Krishna Hare Hare. It's a starting point is different. And then the boy asked to Mahaprabhu, then he was always try to not chant in the toilet, then holding a, a tongue. Then the um, boy asked, but Mahaprabhu, if you um, died in the toilet, what can I do? if we are not chanting in the toilet. And then Mahaprabhu changed the, the order um, from the, the Maha Mantra. I just heard, I think I heard from Rasamai uh, about this story. Yes, that's another story, actually. Mm, thank you. It's, it's also a nice story. Yes. So no restriction. We can chant this mantra and be absorbed so it's a wonderful gift by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So we will read text number 251. Just a moment. Somehow the picture has changed here now. Okay. Shriyo Madhye Kuna Shriya Chivara Hoi Sara Krishna Bhakta Sangha Vina Shriya Nahi Ara Out of all auspicious and beneficial activities, which is the best for the living entity? Ramananda Roy replied, The only auspicious activity is association with the devotees of Krishna. In our case, of Radha. So, purport by Srila Prabhupada, according to Srimad Bhagavatam 11.2.30, Atta Adyantikam Kshemam Brijamu Bhavato Nagaha Samsarismin Kshanartopi Satsanga Sevatir Rinam. We are asking the most perfect welfare activity from you. I think that in this material world, association with devotees, even if it be for a moment, is the greatest treasure house of mankind. Whoa. It's very clear. To be with Sundaram just for a little moment, part of a second, is the best what I can do every day. But be with him. Really be with him. Yes. Deep in the heart, be with him. Yes. Mm. To be together with the devotees in Satchatya Sangha, mm -hmm. in Sangha which is from the same mood actually. Otherwise, it's not, I mean in the beginning everything helps, but after a while 
you have to see that you have such Atya Sangha. Otherwise, you will stand still mm. or even go back. At least this was in my case like this. I really lost all taste because I could not have this Sangha because I didn't understand what I needed actually. Then Gurudev came and showed me and then taste came back actually. So this is the mercy. And this is the Kripa of Radharani. She is taking care always, always. We are never lost. It's, uh, it's written in Shastra, but when Krishna left material world, at the end of Lakara Yuga, before starting Kali Yuga, he left four expansions. Bhagavatam, Ganga, Tulsi, and Vaishnavas. Hmm. For us, Vaishnavas in our line, they I have you of Srimati Radhika, expansion of Srimati Radhika. Yes, it's just wonderful that you are all here and we can have association. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu asked, what should all living entities constantly remember? Ramananda Roy replied, the chief object of remembrance is always the holy name of the Lord, his qualities and pastimes. There's a short purport by Srila Prabhupada, Bhagavatam 2.2.36 Tasmat Saratmana Rajan Hari Savatra Sarvada Shrodhavya Kirti Dhavyascha Smadhavyo Bhagavan Rinam. Shukadev Goswami concludes The business of the living entity is to always remember the Supreme Personality of Godhead in every circumstance. We know who is supreme. The Lord should be heard about, glorified and remembered by all human beings. So this is our sadhana, actually. Mm. When we are cooking, we remember that we cook together with Radhika for Krishna. We are just the helpers in the kitchen. She is cooking for him. If we are do any other service cleaning, we are just the helper of Radharani. She is actually looking that everything is clean for her beloved. She is the chief. She is taking care of everything and we are just a small helper. And if we are going in this meditation the whole day, whatever we do, we have to try again and again because the mind is very tricky. We all know. But again and again we have to pray, please Radhika, please, please, let me remember let me remember, this time it didn't work out, please next time better, next time better, again and again and again. Because we all know, when a child is hanging by mama, please, 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 
please. One day, Mama will say, okay. <laughs> okay. You useless child. Okay, come with me. <laughs> so I hope one day, because I'm useless, and one day I hope that Radharani will say like this, okay, you useless Dasi, come, come and clean my toilet, or maybe clean the outer yard of the Kunj, something like this. At least to start. So it's on us that we actually want. We want. One day we want to do it directly. And in our playing room in this material world, we're actually playing, playing like this. Till the time comes that we will really do it. Because this is our meditation. Mm. Text two hundred and fifty three Jayama Jeji Vera Kartafya Kondyana Radha Krishna Padambujadana Pradhana. Jnana Pradhana. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu further inquired. Out of many types of meditation, which is required for all living entities, Srila Ramananda Roy replied, The chief duty of every living entity is to meditate upon the lotus feet of Radha and Krishna. So again, there's a short statement by Srila Prabhupada. He's quoting Bhagavatam 1.2.14. Tasmat ekana manasa bhagavan sattvatang patihi shrotavya kirti tafyas cha jaya pujas chanityada. Sutta Goswami replied to the sages headed by Shaunaka. Everyone should very attentively listen to the pastimes of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. One should glorify his activities and meditate upon him regularly. So especially in Manjuri Bhav, this is actually our main sadhana. As we know in Vaidhi Bhakti, many duties, sadhana is completely different. Of course, there are similar activities who always stay. But actually, the meditation if you love someone, you meditate on him. So it's the main activity because it's not a sadhana out of duty, it's a sadhana out of love. So that's why sadhana out of love is meditating lovely about the beloved. It's just natural. That's why our main activities is to hear again and again about the sweetness of Radharani's love for her beloved and her love for her maidservants. And this is the main activity because her love for her maidservants is inspiring us. 
when we hear about Karuna Mai, we get some hope that one day we will be also there. And by hearing how she is serving her beloved, we may get some idea where we can help her. Where is the time for our service? When can we jump in and help her? So this is the main sadhana. Because this means you are in your form. It's not possible in your body, in your material body. It's not possible. Only Turu Sitatea. And this awakens Sitatea. Ananda Das Babaji is writing this so many times. So many times. In Vilap Kusumanjali and Radhara Sudhanidi. This is actually awakening. And it's giving food. So we grow in our form. So here it's written, the chief duty of every living entity is to meditate upon the lotus feet of Radha and Krishna. <coughs> The chief duty. When we meditate, we're opening a door, aren't we? We're letting something come in. Let go, taking away the ego that blocks the way. So whenever we meditate just a little bit, then we let in a little bit of that devotional love for Radha and Mohan. We meditate on the lotus feet and we're making that part of our lives, opening a door. No? Opening the door of our heart, actually, yes. Please, Radharani, come in. <laughs> I throw you out so many times. I blocked myself all the time. Now, please come in. So meditation means I want to have it, right? Mm -hmm. Because there are different kinds of meditation. That's why here it's written out of many types of meditation, which is required for all living entities. So many meditations. And we know even in the material world that if we want something, we meditate on that, right? The new horse, the new car, the new friend, whatever it is, first we meditate on it, right? Then we open, like you said, we open for that. It can come now in my life because I'm showing that I want it. This is actually the law of attraction, it's called. Hmm. Of course, it's limited because of your karma and so on. but. In the spiritual sky, it's not limited because even if you have the worst position, even if you are the most fallen, if you meditate on the mercy of Radharani, if you meditate on Karuna Mai, she will find a way to get you to her lotus feet. And this is really amazing. This is 
astonishing and ever fresh. Just to meditate on Radharani's mercy is so wonderful mm. and ever fresh and unlimited, it has no beginning and no end. And this person came in the form of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Mm. This is just showing a little bit of her mercy. Just a little bit. What to speak of all her mercy. She's so merciful that even, even Mohan needs her mercy. Mm. So that's really amazing. So that's why we should meditate upon the lotus feet of Radha and her Krishna. Text 254 Sarvatva Chijivara Kartafya Kahan Vasa Vracha Bhumi Brindhavana Yahan Lila Rasa Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu asked, Where should the living entity live? Abandoning all other places. Mm -hmm. Ramananda Roy replied, The holy place known as Vrindavan or Brachabhumi, where the Lord performed, or where the Lord is performing actually, his rasa dance. So what does it mean? We should now all move to Vrindavan, the whole world? To be in Vrindavan means if we meditate on the Leelas of Radharani and Krishna, they are in Vrindavan. Mm -hmm. So if we meditate on them, we are also in Vrindavan. Because it's not possible to meditate upon them without Vrindavan. So actually, whenever we go inside, like now, we can feel, yes, we are in Vrindavan. I'm not in Germany now. I'm in Vrindavan with you all together. And I can feel that. Because the mercy of Radharani and the mercy of Gurudev is actually giving us this possibility. They are actually... Chaitanya Mahaprabhu brought Vrindavan to us. And Ananda Das Babaji is writing in his comments on in Vilap Kusumanshi. I don't remember the verse, but he is writing. We should live in Vrindavan. And he said, and if this is not possible, then you should be mentally in Vrindavan. And by sharing about the Lilas of Radharani and Krishna, we are in Vrindavan, because they are in Vrindavan. And if we take place, of course, we are in Vrindavan, otherwise it's not possible. Therefore, we need Sitadeya to go to Vrindavan with your body out of feelings. This is a Sitadeya, feelings. Your body is existing out of feelings of Bhava, or Mahabhava, because Radharani actually is giving us this body and she is giving us her feeling. 
And she is actually nourishing us with her feelings. This is actually the breast milk of her. We know even in our plane here that we heard about chakras, that actually it's not just the milk. No, it's the feeling which is sucked out by the child, the love. So in this way, we can understand that actually when we are at the breast of Radharani, we are sucking out Mahabhav. This is our nourishment as small, little babies of Radharani. Sometimes we are in this position, right? When we are maybe a little bit weak, then we meditate, Oh, Radharani, let me be at your breast. Please nourish me. <laughs> and then again, the power is coming, and then you may, you may go further in other meditations about Radharani, Seva, and so on. But again and again, we may come back because we need to be nourished by Radharani. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came to nourish us all. And of course, he didn't come alone. She didn't come alone. <laughs> The perfect team. May I read something? Guruvani Ji. Mm -hmm. The word Raja means to move. Raja. Raja. Sarvada Hindu Haridyaja Ambakam Shalom Raja. When Krishna was take birth in Gopu Mahavan after three and a half years, they moved towards here, close by to its place called Chatikara, then to dig and then undergo. They were always moving according to desires of Krishna and Srimadhi Radhika. Vrishaban Nanda Maharaj and Vrishaban Maharaj, they moved together. And um, Raja means that a God which is moving. If someone needs Raj, is Raj so merciful, but can move to this person. When I sit in, in some place, it's not important in which physical place we are sitting, because Raj is not material dimension. Hmm. There's well, that place where it's a stream of That's feelings uh, and, how to say, images, which is coming from the heart of Rasi Kavishnava. The flow, the flow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is... This is Raj. Yeah, Raj. Beautiful. Oh, nice. Yes, this is the point. We have to consider always, it's not material, it's not a place. All the bodies exist of Mahabhav or Bhav. So it's a place of Bhav. Thank you very much, Radha Charan Prabhu. So where should the living entity live? In Vrindavan Bhumi, where the Lord performed or is performing his Rasa dance. Why Rasa dance? Because this is actually the Lila we all, all different kind of souls can take place actually in our spiritual body. So it's an invitation also. Uh, this question 
where should they live and they live. I don't know about other countries, but for Russians, this was one of the main questions, where we can find that beautiful land, where we can really live freely with love. Wow. <laughs> There you cannot just only freely live, you will get everything. You cannot even imagine what you get there. Hmm? Srila Prabhupada is quoting again a verse from Bhagavatam, let me become one of the herbs and plants of Brindavan, that the gopis tremble, giving up all connections with family and friends and deciding to worship the lotus feet of Mukunda. Those lotus feet are sought by all great saintly persons expert in the study of Vedic literature. Text 255. Shravana Madhya Vera Konshreshta Shravana Rata Krishna Prema Keli Karna Rasayana Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu asked, Out of all topics people listen to, which is the best for all living entities? Ramananda Roy replied, Hearing about the loving affairs between Radha and her beloved Krishna is most pleasing to the ear. Yes, <laughs> and in the session, course session, the sadhu. A little bit louder, please. It's written in Bhagavatam. Satam prasanga mamavirya samvido bhavanti hrit karna rasayana katha. So here, in closer session, the sadhu, about heroic uh, action of Krishna, this is rasayana katha. That katha which is so sweet and giving life. And what is what, what means heroic? When he is trying to come inside of Kunja, <laughs> but and so many obstacles on the way. How when he is trying to get Sri Matiradika, <laughs> what he is ready to do for this? Sometimes he is ready, ready to left his uh, even flute or curling ha hairs. He is dressed in a sannyasi like this, but he doing everything. <laughs> To meet a heroine, you have to be heroic. And so again, is, yeah. I'm sorry. No, no, please, please. It's pleasing to the ear because it harmonizes what's with what's inside. There's a harmony between inside and outside. The part and parcel of Dad Mohan that's inside us finds its way to the, the reality of Dad Mohan's Leela's outside of us. And the closer we are in tune with that, the more pleasure we feel. So, again, a statement from Srimad Bhagavatam. 
Srila Prabhupada is taking here verse 10, 33, 40, Bhagavatam. He who faithfully hears about the dealings between Lord Krishna and the gopis in the rasa dance, and he who describes these activities attain to the perfectional stage of devotional service and simultaneously lose material lusty desires. I find that this is actually again astonishing because first it is stated who faithfully hears about the dealings between Lord Krishna and the gopis in the rasa dance, who hears, first hears, then simultaneously he loses his material lusty desires. It's not vice versa. First you have to lose your material desires and then you can hear. No. First you hear by hearing the process of cleaning of your heart actually is started and is going on. Hearing again, again, like a washing machine. Again and again and again and again and again. Hear the Leelas, hear the Leelas, hear the Leelas. Understand deeper and deeper. And the cloth gets purer and purer by washing and washing and washing and washing by the time. Stay in this water and this water is the rasa. Mm. And this is cleaning the heart. Simultaneously, he is losing the material lust he desires by hearing. That's the point. That's why you are all so great that you come again and again and hear. This is your greatness. Gorovaniji. When Shunarnaga Samaraj comments this uh, verse, he told, many persons criticize me when I'm describing Radha Krishna Lila. But it's written in Shema Bhagavat, and he quoted this verse, and he told, here the word to hear is written in such a way, it's according to Sanskrit grammar, what we must to hear. It's not if we hear, no, it's written here, we must we hear. Shall. Yes, that's a very wonderful point. We have to. Because actually, otherwise it's not possible to lose your lust, your material lust. It's not possible. Like we know, when did I stop to eat meat? First I began to eat prasad. Then I stop immediately. Nobody actually had to press. It was so delicious. It was so, so much variety. I couldn't imagine why I should actually eat this stuff like before. Why I should? This is much more tasty. It's much more variety. It's amazing food. So the higher taste, actually Prabhupada is making this point, the higher taste, if we get the higher taste, why we should go for the lower? Why? Like the mantra is saying when Krishna is coming and wants to kiss, no, no, <laughs> you can have my life, but not my body. My body is Radha's. It's not my, it's Radha's body. So you can have my life, but not 
my body. Why? I should accept the lower taste, she is telling to Krishna. Why? It's much more higher taste if I bring you to my Swamini and serve you. That's the higher taste. So why I should accept the lower taste? So if we hear about the love of Radharani and Krishna, we will understand that our so-called love, usually it's just lust. And then we can get rid of it. Because if you're disgusted from your own qualities, then you can get rid of it. As long as you glorify them, you cannot get rid of them. We have to understand, oh, this is really higher. Why I mm, actually I should give up. But first we need a higher taste. That's the point. So that's why we have to hear. Radha Charan is giving always such wonderful points from the back, humbly. Did I ever told you that I love you so much, Radharan? <laughs> so Prabhupada is writing here, when one is liberated and hears of Lord Krishna's and Radha's loving affairs, he is not inclined to have lusty desires. One mundane refuse once said that when the Vaishnavas chant the name Radha, Radha, he simply remembers a barber's wife named Radha. This is a particular example. Unless one is liberated, he should not try to hear about the loving affairs between Radha and Krishna. If one is not liberated and listen to a relation of the Rasa dance, he may remember his mundane activities and illicit connections with some woman whose name may also be Radha. In the conditioned stage, one should not even try to remember such things. By practicing the regulative principles, one should rise to the platform of spontaneous attraction for Krishna. Then, and only then, should one hear about the Radha Krishna Leela, although these affairs may be very pleasing both to conditioned and to liberated souls. The conditioned soul should not try to hear them. The talk between Ramananda Roy and Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu are conducted on the platform of liberation. So actually, Prabhupada is making it very clear, a person who is inclined, who don't want to give up his material desires, he should not hear about this. But a person who really wants to, go, to get out, this person counts already under the liberated souls, actually, isn't it? If one really wants to get liberation through love, he is counted already. Anandadas Babaji is actually in one sentence, he is making this clear that even if we just consider ourselves to be a Dasi 
of Radharani, we are already liberated. Consideration as a Dasi. When we are Dasi of Mahabhav, how we could not be liberated. But this is not possible if we don't have any attachment. So it has to be on the spontaneous platform. Radha Charan, please. On hand, it's written here by Shilpapada in commentary. If you're not liberated, don't hear about Radha Krishna's loving affairs. From other hand, also we heard this from Shil Gurudev. He told, until you stay, not stay, not good stay, Baba, don't come to read um, these, such books like Krishna Karnamrita, Govinda Lilamrita, please. But then some Rasika Vaishnavas giving this, he is given in particular form, which is digestible for us, for me. For example, Anandas Babaji Maharaj, how he is giving all this uh, Lila. Mm. He is also quoting Govinda Lamrita mm. and other Rasika yeah. But he given in such a way that it's digestible. In the same way, Shilaprabhada did. On the first book, what he gave to Oh, Lord is Krishna book. It was one, one of the first books. Hmm. So actually the principle is like um, uh, Tarun Baba, actually. He was telling us that the uh, I don't remember exactly, but he was saying that what it's what it means um, to be in Swarup City. You remember to be in Swarup City. So before you are in Swarup City, you should actually not discuss this. Uh, these very intimate topics. So, so how you can actually read Vilap Kuzo Manjali, Radharasa Sudanidi, if you are not in your Swarup city? And Tarun Baba actually explained that Swarup city means if you have a person like your Gurudev, who is Manjari, and this mandri is actually guiding you and you are in the association of this mandri, then you count already because he gave you your sita deha and he is actually, um, how you say, um, begleiten, um, accompanying, accompany, accompanying, accompany, yeah. Accompanying. He is, Accompanying. He is with you and he's guiding you, right? So because of that situation, you count already to that state. That's the point, actually, I want to make. So we can see it in this connection. You count already under the liberated souls. If you hear it. Is this... Uh also, what I quoted before, Satam Prasanga Mamvire Samvido, when we are hearing the uh, very Visrasika topics in the company of Satam means Sadhu, real Sadhu, then Ashwa Pavarga Vartmani, very soon uh, Pavarga means Samsara will be finished. And Shraddha, Ratir, Bhaktir, Anukramishati. Gradually, first Shraddha came in, then Bhava Bhakti came in, and then Prema Bhakti came in. Wonderful. So how lucky we are. Without any qualification, just on the base of the mercy of Guru Manjari, we are already in this position that we can hear. 
this lilas, this lila kata. Otherwise, it wouldn't be possible. Hmm. So that means we are already counted under the liberated souls. Yeah. Yeah. In Russian, we have proverb, tell me who is your friend, and then I will tell you who are you. <laughs> so if we just stay in contact, we just try our best, we just want to get to the goal and not leave the association, not turn our back, then we will reach the goal, that's for sure. Yeah. Such a mercy. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu asked, among all worshipable objects, which is the chief? Ramananda Roy replied, the chief worshipable object is the holy name of Radha and Krishna, the Hare Krishna mantra. I just remembered that actually once we discussed that actually the Hare Krishna mantra is made for Radha. When she is suffering separation actually, the Kinkaris chant the Hare Krishna mantra for her. This is a wonderful meditation. <laughs> so Srila Prabhupada is quoting again Srimad Bhagavatam verse 6.3.22 In this material world, the living entity's only business, the living entity's only business, is to accept the path of bhakti yoga and chant the holy name of the Lord. The living entity's only business. Yeah. Mukti Bukti Vanche Ye Kahan Du Haragati Stavara Deha Deva Deha Yaiche Asva Stiti. And what is the destination of those who desire liberation and those who desire sense gratification? Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu asked. Ramananda Roy replied, Those who attempt to merge into the existence of the Supreme Lord will have to accept a body like that of a tree. And those who are overly inclined toward sense gratification will attain the bodies of demigods. So it's amazing why it's written, those who attempt to merge into the existence of the Supreme Lord will have to accept the body like that of a tree. I thought they are going in Brahman. Radhacharan Prabhu, you are our teacher. Please, you can say something about this? Hmm. The existence of the Supreme Lord 
does not include his spiritual aspect or his personal aspect. So I think you're right when you say Brahman, it's referring to Brahman. Just uh, when we when we attempt to merge into reality, then we're merging only into the things that exist and not to the souls that exist. And then we end up as trees. We, we become things who exist. So he's not referring to the personal side of the Lord, the personal the personality of Godhead, nor to the spiritual side, the paramat, just the Brahman. I think that must be what he's saying. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so you mean to say the love of Radharani is everywhere and those who don't want to accept this personally will be in this love not personally so just like energy and this energy is even in a tree so they will be also in a tree or yes yes like this i have one so i'm thinking like this when i was small i asked my mother what's the difference between tree and us <laughs> yeah. and my understanding we are living means we are doing something feeling something desiring something <clears throat> But what is tree doing? It's also living, but nothing. <laughs> this, this is um, that jiva which, which have desire to emerge in uh, Lord's existence. This means it's an entity. Those purpose to uh, feel emotions, to love and exchange. But in this situation, nothing. Like this tree, non moving. Nothing, not trying to get something. Just I am is. That's all. Mm. Okay. It's existence without the transcendental dimension. Another two great souls entered the room. Jainanda Prabhu, thank you that you are here. I, I have another, another sign now. I'm sorry. Andakachi, Jai Shirade. Um, did you hear the question actually? No. Ah, it is about this sentence. Those who attempt to merge into the existence of the Supreme Lord will have to accept the body like that of a tree. So I asked, I thought they are going into the Brahman. So why it's written that they will go in the body of a tree? So this was the question. And the part of your answer, <laughs> I would I would like to hear. <laughs> I agreed that I agreed that it was going into Brahman, was understanding to merging with reality such as it is, without its spiritual character. But also <laughs> it's it depends on realization. Yeah. Some of us are kind of you know very, very high level. They can merge into the Brahman, but the someone, someone who is not to that level might be, you know, the tree or sometimes stone or something, you know, because because they are so so senseless, they don't want to associate, even they don't want to move. So tree can, you know, usually cannot move. You know, spiritual world may be different, but uh, <laughs> generally speaking, stone does not move by him by himself. Tree also does not move by himself because they are so senseless. Like sometimes I'm feeling, you know, sometimes Guru Dev said to us, "You are impersonal," means you know, like uh, awareness is very low. 
try to stay away from from intimate relationship. This is, I know, we have mm. some tendency, Japanese, you know, and we have a tendency. But this tendency becomes so strong, we don't move. We don't, we don't feel anything. Actually, rejecting feeling, rejecting awareness, so therefore become like tree. Of course, today there's some sense there, but you know, stone like this, mm. or something mountain. They, they may feel better a little bit. That's my understanding. Some of it very elevated, they can merge into. But uh, they are not so much elevated. They become to be or like a stone or something. That's a, that's a my humble feeling. <laughs> Thank you. So Prabhupada is writing those who desire liberation by merging into is the existence of God do not desire sense gratification within the material world. On the other hand, they have no information about serving the lotus feet of the Lord. Mm. Consequently, they are doomed to stand like trees for many thousands of years. Although trees are living entities, they are non-moving. The liberated soul who attempts to merge into the existence of the Lord is no better than the trees. Tree also stand in the Lord existence because material energy and the Lord's energy are the same. Similarly, the Pramana effulgence is also the energy of the Supreme Lord. It is the same whether one remains in the Brahman effulgence or in the material energy, because in either there is no spiritual activity. Better situated are those who desire sense gratification and promotion to the heavenly planets. Such people want to enjoy themselves like denizens of heaven in gardens of paradise. They at least retain their individuality in order to enjoy life. But the impersonalists who try to lose their individuality also love both material and spiritual pleasure. The stone is unmovable and has neither material nor spiritual activities. As far as the hard-working karmis are concerned, Srimad Bhagavatam states, after performing various sacrificial rituals for elevation to the heavenly planets, the karmis go there and enjoy themselves with the demigods to the extent that they have obtained the result of pious activities. Those who study the Vedas and drink so much juice seeking the heavenly planets worship me indirectly. They take birth on the planet of Indra, where they enjoy godly delights. When they have thus enjoyed heavenly sense pleasure, they return to this mortal planet again. Thus, through the Vedic principles, they achieve only flickering happiness. Therefore, after finishing the results of pious activities, the Kamis again return to this planet in the form of rain. And they begin their life as grass and plants in the evolutionary process. Wow. After this is, it also Gita also mentioned some some place, no? So like that. Through the rain, soul is coming and uh, and then into the grain. 
So, and the human being taking grain, then, you know, then that, then that grain become like a, you know, kind of semen, and then through the, you know, kind of. Mm. This is evolution. <laughs> yeah, this is amazing. Very beautiful. Mm. So for me, the, the main point is that actually, Prabhupada actually is saying here that even the materialists who want to enjoy are in a better position than the one who wants to merge with the Brahman. Why is that? Because they are giving up their personality. Their exchange of love actually is not possible. And this is the point actually. This is the main point, if we give up our personality, we cannot be in exchange of love. Mm -hmm. And also material people is just a change in consciousness, then like in like a coins. Coins like a fancy, you know. Crypto signs. Yeah, this size. Just to you know, this change consciousness like this, then become spiritual. Like say, okay, I love, I live, I love this lady, or I love this, you know, like something. But uh, if object change, instead of lady, instead of Radha Mohan, hmm. instead of some kind of material object to Radha Mohan, then everything fine. Hmm. But the impersonalist is difficult because they don't know how to love, they don't know how to feel. So this is very difficult to you know change the heart because the heart is so 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 hard and then softness is very missing. But the material person they have some softness just to need to change the consciousness object oh, to, you know material to into spiritual mm. that you need that guru is very expert. They know how to love in an impure way. Yeah. And it's a matter of purifying yes, their love. Yes, yes, yes. So at least they have love. And even if it's just to a dog. Yes. <laughs> like in Germany, most people have dogs. More than children nowadays. The bones <laughs> <clears throat> Ramananda Roy continued, those who are devoid of all mellows are like the grows that suck the juice from the bitter fruits of the nimba tree of knowledge. Whereas those who enjoy mellows are like the cuckoos who eat the buds of the mango tree of love of Godhead. So Prabhupada is writing, the speculative process of empiric philosophy is as bitter as the fruit of the nimba tree. The tasting of this fruit is the business of crows. In other words, the philosophical process of realizing the absolute truths is a process taken up by crow-like men. The cuckoos have very sweet voices with which to chant the holy name of the Lord and taste the sweet fruit of the mango tree. Such devotees relish sweet mellows with the Lord. So Ramanai, Ramananda Roy conclude, concluded, the unfortunate empiric philosophers taste the dry process of philosophical knowledge, whereas the devotees regularly drink the nectar of love of Krishna. Therefore, they 
are most fortunate of all. In this way, both Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Ramananda Roy passed the full night <coughs> relishing the mellow of Krishna Kata, topics about Krishna, while they were chanting, dancing and crying, the night ended. The next morning they both departed to perform their respective duties, but in the evening Ramananda Roy returned to meet the Lord again. The next evening, after discussing the topic of Krishna for some time, Ramananda Roy caught hold of the lotus feet of the Lord and spoke as follows. There is a transcendental variety in talks about Krishna and Radharani and there are transcendental loving affairs, humors and pastimes. Ramananda Roy then admitted, You have manifested many transcendental truths in my heart. This is exactly the way Narayan educated Lord Brahma. Ramananda Roy continued, the super soul within everyone's heart speaks not externally but from within. He instructs the devotees in all respects and that is his way of instructions. So, he made it very clear that not he was speaking, Ramananda Roy, but Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was speaking through him. And he's holding the feet of the Lord. So in this way, the talks between Lord, the Lord and Ramananda Roy are going to its end. And next time, I want to read um, Yeah. Next time I want to read something else. <laughs> so what is uh, your, <laughs> your subject matter? Next time we will read about the Lord who is jumping in the sea and how the fisherman is getting him out of the sea. Wow. Wow. And you know today I heard from you know Nada Champa. He explained in Nara Maharaj expression about the chanting in the Mara. Could you could you repeat it? What? You chanting this in you know, a Torah seed. Uh, this is very beautiful really, explain that channel this moment. Uh, once I pray to Shunran Gasai Maharaj about Harinam, I had desire to receive test for Harinam and he gave me a realization what when they chant in Harinam on Japa beads from made from Dulu sin, this is mean direct service to Radha and Mohan is Manjari service because the Tulsi beads made from Tulsi. Tulsi symbolized Kunja, the place of meeting Radha and Mohan and Nama and Nami Abhinatva. Nama or name and the holder of name, same. When they're telling Hare Radha, when they're telling Krishna, Krishna. And then holding with two beads and telling us the names, this means we're arranging their meeting. This. <laughs> <Not him. laughs>
Wonderful. Wonderful last words. So we will end here for today. Thank you very, very much that you were here and sharing with us. Like I said, this is not to be understood what kind of mercy this is actually. Mm -hmm. So I'm very thankful and uh, please let us bless each other mm. that we can go on this way. So actually it's a trick. I want to have your mercy, but actually I say like this, you know, then you get more inspired. So maybe you can bless me that I can come to Kunja and serve Radharani one day. Jai Shirade. Thank you very much. <laughs>